In this video, we are going to use the conservation of energy to understand the swinging motion of pendulums. A pendulum is made up of a suspended object that can swing back and forth. And now the goal of this video is to use the conservation of energy to describe the motion of pendulums. And now remember, the conservation of energy equation says that an object's initial kinetic energy plus the object's initial potential energy is equal to the object's final kinetic energy plus the object's final potential energy. But before we can start using this equation, let's look at the motion of a pendulum. There are three main components of a pendulum's motion. First, we have the minimum point. You might also hear this called the equilibrium position. It's when the pendulum is hanging straight down. And then we have the pendulum's maximum point. This is when it's swung all the way out to the right or all the way out to the left. And now in terms of energy, at the maximum point, all of the pendulum's energy is stored as potential energy. That means at the maximum point, the pendulum has no kinetic energy. That's because at the maximum point, the speed of the pendulum is zero. Now let's look at the minimum point. Here, the pendulum only has kinetic energy. So that means all of the potential energy that it had at the maximum point is converted to kinetic energy. That means it has no potential energy. And most importantly, the pendulum's maximum speed occurs at the minimum point. And this makes sense because at the minimum point, it has the greatest amount of kinetic energy. And so now that we understand the pendulum swinging motion, I wanna highlight a very important question that comes up all the time. And that is, what is the maximum speed of a pendulum? So let's derive an equation to find V max. I'll start by drawing my pendulum. And we are going to imagine that we started at the minimum point and we swung out to the maximum point. The next thing we want to do is write our conservation of energy equation. And now let's simplify this equation as much as we can. First, remember, when we're at the minimum point, all of the energy is kinetic energy. So the initial potential energy is zero and we can get rid of that term. Then when we swing up to the maximum point, we've converted all of that kinetic energy to potential energy. That means there's no kinetic energy left, so we can get rid of this term. And what we're left with is this equation, which says the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy. And now remember, kinetic energy has the equation 1 half mv squared, and potential energy has the equation mgh. Now we can simplify this equation because m will cancel out, and that leaves us with this. And now remember, vi represents the velocity at the minimum point, and I told you that the maximum velocity occurs at the minimum point. So let's replace vi with a vmax. And now we can rearrange this equation and isolate for the maximum speed. And that leaves us with this equation, which says that the maximum speed is equal to the square root of 2g hf, where g is the acceleration due to gravity and hf is the final height of the pendulum. But what is hf? How do we find the height a pendulum will reach when it swings to the right or the left? Well, we can figure that out using some trigonometry. I'll start by drawing my pendulum, and this pendulum will swing out until it reaches its maximum point. And we want to solve for hf, which represents the height that the pendulum reaches. The way I do this is by forming a right angle triangle. And now we can see that hf is this portion, and this portion is the adjacent side of the right angle triangle. And now this pendulum 
is a certain length L. And you can see that the length of the pendulum is equal to the adjacent side plus HF, the height that the pendulum reaches. And now we can rearrange this equation to solve for HF. And we see that the height the pendulum reaches is equal to the length of the pendulum minus the adjacent side of our right angle triangle. And now all that's left is to solve for the adjacent side. And we can do that using our right angle triangle. The hypotenuse of the right angle triangle is the length of the pendulum. And now because we want to solve for the adjacent side, we will use cos theta, which is equal to adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And then all we need to do is replace the hypotenuse with the length of the pendulum, and we can see that the adjacent side is equal to L cos theta. And now we have the equation to solve for the height of the pendulum. So HF is equal to the length of the pendulum minus L cos theta. And you can use this to solve for the maximum speed that the pendulum reaches. And now I know this was pretty complicated. So let's do an example to practice using these equations. And now in this question, we have a two meter long pendulum which swings out at a 30 degree angle. And we wanna know what is the maximum speed of the pendulum. And now in order to answer this question, we will have to use our maximum speed equation. And in order to use this equation, we will need to solve for the height that the pendulum reaches. And now using the height equation, I will plug in the values for the length of the pendulum and the angle. And after doing the math, we find that the height the pendulum reaches is 0.27 meters. And now that we found the height, we can use the maximum speed equation. And when we do the math, we find that the maximum speed that the pendulum reaches is about 2.3 meters per second. And one thing I hope you notice is that the maximum speed of a pendulum does not depend on the object's mass. It only depends on the acceleration due to gravity and the height that the pendulum reaches. And now before we end, let's do a quick summary of what we learned about a pendulum swinging motion. We learned that at the maximum point that the pendulum reaches, it only has potential energy. And this means the pendulum has no speed at the maximum point. But when it swings back and reaches the minimum point, all of that potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy. And at this point, the pendulum is moving with its maximum speed. And then using the conservation of energy equation, we determine that the maximum speed can be calculated using this equation, where HF is the maximum height that the pendulum reaches. And it can be found using this equation, and with that, that's the end of this lesson on pendulums and how you can use the conservation of energy to understand a pendulum's swinging motion.